For 12 years now, Walmart has been the number one company on the Fortune 500 list. The company is the world's biggest retailer. That's it. Fortune magazine's named us one of the most top 100 companies to work for. Meaning it has more revenue every year during this 12 year span than any other company in the country. It's done that in a couple of ways. Sam Walton opened the first Walmart store in 1962 in Arkansas. And over time, as he grew the company, a lot of different members of the Walton family have played important roles in the company's growth. The driving factor to Walmart's success is its consistently low prices. Sam Walton's mission was to provide shoppers with the lowest price anytime, anywhere. That means sometimes really aggressive negotiating with suppliers and brands. That also has meant in its history not always paying its employees what a lot of people would want to see. Just a real, real focus on frugality in sort of every part of the business and then beating local retailers on price as a result. As Walmart got bigger, that scale grew into power, and that power allowed it to get even better pricing from suppliers, meaning it was really, really hard to compete for anyone that was just a single location store or even a smaller chain. About 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart. This huge and reliable customer base allows them to keep prices low when people turn to their local branch to get daily necessities. Walmart launched its website in the year 2000 and has spent decades ensuring a smooth online shopping experience. As a result, e-commerce is now driving Walmart's steady growth. In March 2024 alone, Walmart.com attracted 338.5 million visitors, and their online sales have increased almost eightfold since 2016. So now they have features like order online, pick up at store. They have curbside pickup for grocery orders. And if you live in a big city, you might not recognize how many people would find that valuable. But in large swaths of the US, that is incredibly valuable. Not only is it convenient if you're already in your car, but when Amazon delivery may take a day or two or three to arrive, if you need something that moment, Walmart may be the best answer for a lot of people. I think it's made them finally a real competitor or rival to Amazon in the digital space. While you might not think of Walmart first and foremost as a technology company, there actually has been a lot of technology innovation that's happened at the company since even the early years. In the 1980s, there was a satellite communication system that actually connected all of the Walmart stores. That was a huge innovation at the time. In more recent years, Walmart has started experimenting with technologies like drone delivery. But in the next five to 10 years, you should expect that this will become a real way to deliver goods in some parts of the US at least. Beyond that, Walmart's also investing heavily in AI technologies. They've rolled out a online shopping assistant that is supposed to give you recommendations and other ideas on what to buy when you don't know exactly what you're out there to purchase. Over the years, Walmart has really used its supply chain expertise to its advantage too. Not only does it have this massive network of warehouses, but it also has thousands of its own Walmart trucks, which helps it move merchandise in between stores and warehouses and other hubs. That has really, for a long time, been a big advantage in getting products in and out of stores really quickly and turning over inventory between seasons or holidays faster or definitely as fast as its rivals. Meanwhile, shoplifting has become a growing problem for the retail giant. Reuters reports that Walmart loses about $3 billion every year from theft, or 1% of its $300 billion in revenue. The company has recently posted limitations on self-checkout lines to alleviate the problem, and they also have loss prevention officers watching over the sales floor behind security cameras. Looking ahead, Walmart has a lot of opportunity in front of it still, but also a lot of threats. If the company is not effective in investing in AI as we see this boom in technology, they could fall behind. 
Then there's new areas that Walmart has tried to invest in that they haven't been very successful in to date. One that's top of mind right now is healthcare. Yes, Walmart has thousands of pharmacies and they do well in that space, but they've also tried to open their own medical care facilities, doctor's offices, dental offices, and recently just announced that despite spending maybe billions on those initiatives, they're shutting it down. The last thing is regulation. I was talking about how Amazon is sort of the target for regulators in this country, but I don't think that means long-term that politicians and regulators will just ignore how big Walmart's become, how powerful they are, and especially in the grocery space, what their power means for others, for food suppliers. And so those remain risks for the company as well. One more thing I'd say is, Walmart is still not at the top when it comes to paying their employees well. Yes, they're the biggest employer in the US, but that comes with this responsibility to give the people working for you a living wage. Many people who work for Walmart would say they don't have that yet. And so Walmart will continue to compete for talent at all levels of the company, and they'd be open to criticisms if they don't continue to do better when it comes to wages for their lowest workers.